Hi, I'm Joe Sweeney. I founded the Acervo Project in response to the growing epidemic of human trafficking and child exploitation. Classifying this as an epidemic is an understatement. Our investigation teams and cyber analysts are tracking child predators every day. We're making a difference, but we need your help. The average age of a trafficked child is just 14 years old. Will you join the Acervo Project team? Donate $14 a month to protect the next at-risk 14-year-old. Pledge your $14 a month at theacervoproject.org. That's A-S-S-E-R-V-O dot org. Taken TV is making TV watchable again. Join us on the Active Kingdom Entertainment Network. Download Taken TV from your app store now. Hi, I'm Brad Dacus, President and Founder of the Pacific Justice Institute. Welcome to Faith and Law. Now let's take a look at this trending viral video. In and out says it will soon ban employees from wearing masks in five states. Now that does not include California. Good. Starting next month, employees in Texas, Nevada, Colorado, Arizona, and Utah will need a doctor's note to wear one. The new rule was leaked from an internal memo sent it. out last week. In and out says the move is meant to promote effective communication and allow associates to show their smiles to customers. Workers in California and Oregon will still be allowed to wear them without a doctor's note. Well, what do we say for common sense, folks? Uh, <laughs> it's about time that we realize the pandemic is behind us. And I'm so glad to see in and out Burger making such a concerted effort to no longer allow fear to grip their customers, their company. That's, this is what we need across the country. We need businesses to step out and say, enough is enough. We're tired of fear. We have not received a spirit of fear as a nation. Our nation has not prospered and excelled because of fear. But what? Because of courage, because of boldness, because of trust in the Lord. Well, I think this is a, a definite step in the right direction. We also need to understand that California and Oregon, they're not quite up to the rest of the country. So, you know, they're still not going to require a, a note from a doctor in order to have an employee not wear a mask. But getting rid of the mask means getting rid of an unnecessary, illogical fear. And it also means people being able to be people, communicating with expressions of hope, positive smiles. That's what we need. And hats off to In-N-Out Burger for making a real positive difference. Let's hope that the other chains out there can learn the same. McDonald's, Burger King, you listening? Let's hope so. Well, now I'd like to talk to one of our attorneys about a very important case uh, in California. Uh, Michael Peffer is the attorney who heads up our Southern California office for Southern California, and he's been involved in a very important case uh, dealing with an employee who has been told they have to be vaxxed or else. Michael, welcome to the program. Thank you, Brad. Great to be here, as always. Now, Michael, you're representing a public school teacher in the L.A. Unified School District. Uh, what's going on in this case? Yeah, Brad, you know, this is an interesting one. As most people will know, LAUSD, Los Angeles Unified School District, really went all in on this vaccine uh, to the extent that pretty much if you had a, a religious exemption, they just declined you and uh, made no real attempt to accommodate you. Uh, they had a, 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 a zero tolerance policy for people that weren't vaccinated. And that even included people that had uh, requested an exemption based upon a sincerely held religious belief, something that the law requires that they consider and make reasonable efforts to perform. Okay, Michael, we see so many of these cases nationwide. I know we at PJI have about 90 cases across the country dealing just with this issues. Employees who are being required to, uh, to be vaxxed or wear masks, even after the pandemic's over. So 
Why do you think, though, in particular, we have so many cases dealing with public schools? Why are educators seemingly being targeted? Well, it is true. And I think that really educators are being targeted on a number of realms. I do believe that um, there is a hostility toward uh, Christians in the education field. And I think that that uh, really uh, showed itself strongly in this issue of the vaccine requirements. And our client had a good rep reputation there. <clears throat> and uh, he he did well. He was a coach as well as a teacher and um, was well thought of throughout his uh, tenure there until he decided that he was not going to get this vaccine. And keep this in keep in mind, this guy is a pastor as well. So he, his his tent making job, so to speak, is as a school teacher. But he his vocation is that of a pastor. So he had the the ability to articulate strongly what his religious belief was, but nonetheless he was still targeted, and targeted he was. Uh, basically, they just gave him no choice whatsoever. The only choice they gave them, by the way, these teachers at LAUSD, was that if they had room for them, they could teach on some kind of an online academy. But that became a non-factor because they not many kids were involving themselves in that. So I, I think that this was a, a real, um, I think the teachers union was really strongly in favor of these vaccines and really locking these um, uh, a student up, uh, I'm sorry, really locking these uh, uh, teachers uh, into what, everyone was being compelled to do and that is get the vaccine get the boosters and our our uh, uh, client ended up losing his job as did many of our clients okay now michael your client as i understand was not targeted in any way because of job performance there's nothing in your client's record to justify any attack on them it's instead because of their sincere religious convictions not to be vaxxed, right? That's exactly right, Brad. Uh, indeed, he was not a disciplinary problem. He hadn't been disciplined. He was simply doing his job and had been promoted, in fact, in his job uh, uh, on several occasions. So he was a well-thought-of employee, and this had nothing to do with a performance-related problem. I know that the school district tried to to uh, say it in the line of a, a a disciplinary problem, but it was only disciplinary after he said that he had a sincerely held religious belief that kept him from getting the vaccine. That was it. No, no behavior problems. Uh, he was well thought of prior to that. Okay, Michael, so how do we see this case going forward? What, what are we looking at? Yes, uh, we, we have actually several cases right now, all filed around the same time involving Los Angeles Unified School District, LAUSD. And so uh, right now we're in the beginning of, of our discovery. We're going to uh, you know, take some depositions of, of officials there at LAUSD. Uh, we're going to, of course, do some written discovery and uh, find out some information as to what decisions they were making. Because remember, they didn't really give any, they gave very short shrift to this concept of a sincerely held religious belief. They really did not try to accommodate them. So these are policies that we're going to discover about, and I think put our client in a good position to either settle this case or we'll take it to trial. Well, Michael, thank you for the great work that you're doing. I know this is just one of a number of cases like this that you're handling and that our attorneys across the country are handling. Uh, keep up the great work. Thanks, Greg. Well, now that we're speaking about public education, folks, we've got another issue that we've been dealing with nationwide, and that's involving school districts telling teachers to lie to parents about LGBTQ issues that they're child may be dealing with, maybe gender identity issues or sexuality issues. 
Well, in New Jersey, there's a school district that said, oh, no, not on our watch. We're going to adopt a policy that actually protects parents' rights, that actually says teachers do not lie to parents. Be open and honest with parents. Well, that school district is under attack, and PJI is in the middle of this. And to help talk about this case, I'd like to bring on now our attorney who heads up our office just outside of Philadelphia in New Jersey, attorney Karen White. Karen, welcome to the program. Hello. Okay, Karen, t- tell us about this case. So what, what's going on with this case and, and what role is PGI playing? Uh, thank you for having me. Um, in New Jersey, right now, the attorney general is suing four different boards of education for passing policies that require parental notification, that requires a school to tell a parent when the child or student has an issue with gender identity. And right now the Attorney General of the state of New Jersey, a man by the name of Matthew Platkin, has said that in telling parents when their child has a gender identity issue by schools, when when schools do that, Mr. Platkin has said that's against the law and that it's discriminatory against the students. And he has sued four different boards of education to prevent them from enforcing or enacting these policies where parents would know if Johnny comes to school one day and says, I want to be called Jane and I want to dress in girls clothing and I want to use the female restrooms and locker rooms. Mr. Platkin, the attorney general, says parents don't have a right to know that. And these school boards are telling him, yes, they have a right to know that that's happening with their child during the school day. And so, as I said, there's four complaints filed. We have filed a motion to intervene. And that means we're trying to become a party to the action. Uh, We represent, PJI is representing Sean Highland. He's the director of advocacy at the New Jersey Family Policy Council, a nonprofit group here in New Jersey uh, that represents parents and uh, parental interests. So we've partnered with them and we're representing Sean. I am representing Sean in a motion to intervene in each of those four complaints that the attorney general has filed against the boards of education. And we're arguing that we would like to become a defendant, a party defendant to help defend these four school boards who are brave enough to stand up to the state and say, no, we're not listening to you. What you're telling us to do is crazy. We're telling parents what's going on with their kids in school. And so that's what we're hoping to achieve, to become a party to the action and help these school boards push back and stand up against the state of New Jersey, the attorney general, the director of the Division of Civil Rights, and our governor, ultimately, who who is setting this tone for our state, which is saying, parents, stay out of public school. We don't want you involved and we don't want you there. They're talking out both sides of their mouth because in, in public statements, they say, oh, no, we recognize Parents are partners with us in public school. And yet, as they're saying that, in the very same moment, they're taking action against school boards, boards of education, locally elected volunteers who say no. Parents have a right to know what's happening with their kids in school. And that includes when their children have issues or difficulties with mental health issues or with gender identity issues. And and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to help these school boards defend those policies. Okay, Karen. So, you know, how deep does this deception go? I mean, you know, to what extent are teachers uh, to lie to parents? How deep does the deception go? Well, if, if you believe the attorney general, when a school tells a parent that the student is having any kind of gender identity issue, or that the student has expressed some type of uh, action or belief in in any LGBTQ issue. According to the Attorney General of the state of New Jersey, when a school tells a parent that information, they are outing that child to their parents, and that causes the child harm and treats them in a way that is disparate and discriminatory and is illegal. The state of New Jersey would have you believe that the school, the child, and the state 
are the best ones to determine what is in the best interest of the child and not the parent. And, and that's crazy. The deception is deep. The push to get parents out is, is extreme. There, there's no uh, precedent to support this type of interpretation of the New Jersey laws against discrimination. And it's an overreach. Uh, we need to fight back. Okay. Now, if, if we didn't step in and fight this, because I know we're going to fight this and we're going to take this as far and as long as we need to, to go to bat for parents' rights. But uh, if we didn't, how great are the implications of this action by the Attorney General of New Jersey with regards to parental rights? If we don't continue or t- attempt to fight this type of action by the state, in the end, our public schools will be um, will be devoid of any parental input whatsoever. And, and I think that's what the state wants. I think that's where they're headed. They want parents out of it so that they can mold and indoctrinate students into a belief system that the state uh, wants. Uh, they don't want challenges from parents. They don't want corrections from parents. They don't want input from parents. And this is another way to isolate the child within the school system, away from the parental or family influence, and indoctrinate them into the state's belief system, the state's moral code. Uh, it, it's offensive to the law. It's offensive to me as an attorney. And I am hopeful uh, that a judge will uh, not allow this overexpansion uh, of this interpretation that's that's asking the courts to really find a new, a, a completely new interpretation of a law against discrimination. And we're hopeful that the courts will not allow that to happen. Um, but again, the first step is we've got to get to the, the courts to allow us to be a party to the action uh, and grant our motion to intervene. Uh, I don't know when that will we'll get decisions on that, probably in, in the next month or so is what I'm hopeful of. So where are we at? What, where is this case moving forward? Moving forward, we'll wait for a decision on the motion to intervene. If we are granted the, our motion and we're allowed to become a party to the matter, this is going to be decided by a higher court. Uh, at, at Right now, at the level it is, um, the Division of Civil Rights will likely uphold the Attorney General's complaints. Um, and then it will go to an administrative law judge where there will be a hearing testimony and witnesses will be heard. If that administrative law judge, again, upholds the state's action, it will go to the New Jersey Appellate Court. And if the Appellate Court upholds the state action, then it will go to the New Jersey Supreme Court. So I I do believe that this is going to be a higher level decision. This isn't something that New Jersey is dealing with with in an isolated manner. Uh, This issue is occurring in Virginia and California and, and many other states across our country. And ultimately, a higher court will decide, does the state have the right to exclude parents from public education, from the mental health issues facing their, the students? And, and be reminded, the policies here in New Jersey, the school boards being sued, one of them is a K-8 to district. So we're talking extremely young children from five years old to 14 years old. Uh, and a poll just came out last week in New Jersey, Monmouth University um, took a survey and I believe it was more than 75% of people of of all uh, political parties do not support this. They do not want the state telling schools to lie to parents or hide information from parents. And uh, so I'm hopeful that, you know, we will be able to become a party to the action, help these school boards defend their policies. The, The steps they've taken are brave. They knew the state would come after them. And these local uh, school boards voted for these policies anyway and put them into action. And uh, I I am am impressed with their bravery and they're willing to uh, step out and say to the state, no, you're not going to tell us what to do here in our town. We're going to keep our parents informed and we're doing our best to become parties to the actions so that we can help these school boards uh, defend their policies and push back against the state and say, we're not we're not accepting this and this won't happen in New Jersey. Well, Karen, I'm just glad that we have someone like you uh, there in the midst of this going to bat uh, for this school district and and these parents. Um, This is nasty. And New Jersey is a dark blue state like California. And if we don't stand up to this, uh, it's going to be everywhere across the country. And so I'm glad that we're doing what we're doing. Karen, keep up the great work. I really appreciate it. Now, folks, 
Uh, I want you to know that the work that Karen's doing, the work that our attorneys and our 31 offices across the country handling over 185 cases in active litigation. This just doesn't come out of thin air. Uh, This is because of people out there like you, moms and dads, grandmas and grandpas, churches, that choose to partner with our work at Pacific Justice Institute so we take on these cases completely without charge. I want to thank you, those of you who are partnering with our work, and if you'd like to be a part of our team, actually be a part of the fight. Go to our website, pji.org, pji.org. You can sign up to get our e-newsletter, keep us in prayer, and at the same time, uh, you can also become a regular monthly supporter. However God calls you, uh, please act on that. Go to pji.org. Well, they're, they're in the trenches and they're fighting. And, you know, PGI is on the front lines for the battle for freedom and liberty. Uh, they've been doing so much to equip pastors across the country and to really fight for the values that have made this country so great. Honored to be supportive of PGI. We're living in a time when Christians are constantly under assault for their beliefs in the marketplace. And if there's not someone to advocate for them and help them with the legal necessities of defending themselves, they're going to get fired. They have no recourse. Most people don't have the resources to go hire a lawyer. It would uh, deplete everything they own. And most lawyers, quite frankly, across the country don't deal in religious liberty issues. Well, we're living in some very difficult days in America where basic freedoms and especially religious liberty is under attack. And that's one of the reasons why Pacific Justice Institute is so vitally important to the future of this nation. Uh, What a great group of lawyers, first class, top rate lawyers who are willing to stand up for freedom and stand up for our American citizens under attack. Yeah, I mean, they can support, uh, they can follow, they can pray. Uh, We need more organizations like PJI. And I can tell you that being in the front lines, there's not enough people that are actually in the trenches doing the difficult but tough work. And that's exactly why this organization is so critical. One of the most incredible things about Pacific Justice Institute is that they do pro bono work. And what does that mean? Well, it means the rest of us have a responsibility. We've got to stand up and provide financial incentives and financial opportunities for these attorneys uh, to get out there and do the fighting. And that's one of the reasons why we have Pacific Justice Institute attorneys on my national radio show, because we want to let people know, hey, there is a need here. These folks are doing very important work and they're doing very important, successful work as well and that's why they need our support. When a Christian is targeted for his or her beliefs, it affects every believer in America. This idea that, well, it didn't happen to me. Well, you're next. And when Pacific Justice Institute takes on a case, it's not just that one individual that they really are representing, because a legal precedent may be established from that that will protect a million believers who could be in the same position for the exact same issue. Now, we've looked at these cases, we've looked at these challenges in the law. Let's take a look at the Word of God. What does God's Word say about these challenges? Well, first, I'd like to take a look at Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. It says, Conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or remain absent, I will hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. This is a great exhortation to us as members of the body of Christ, folks, because As we deal with these struggles and these challenges, uh, first, we're going to have challenges in ourselves. To the extent, are we going to stay true to the gospel? Or are we going to fall away? Are we going to start compromising truth, what God's Word says with the teachings of the world, the things that they're trying to push on us, push on our children? We need to stand firm, and we need to cling to Christ. We need to keep our eyes on Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith. And as things get more and more intense, as the spiritual war increases more and more, 
We need to cling to the Lord like a little boy clings to a dad in a, in a thunderstorm. We need to cling to the Lord all the more, knowing that in the Lord we will have our strength, in the, in the Lord we'll have courage, we'll be able to endure and have victory no matter what the cost, no matter what the challenge. It also tells us that we also need to be united as members of the body of Christ. With persecution, with trials, with spiritual war- warfare comes unity. And we are strong and stronger in the body of Christ when we are united as Christians at facing these struggles together. There's another verse I want us to take a look at. It's John 16, 33. It says, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Uh, What Jesus is talking about are the things that we're going to be facing in the end times. It doesn't take God by surprise. Isn't that good to notice that? uh, That Jesus is saying, you know, I've said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In other words, it's going to happen, but I'm letting you know ahead of time that you'll have peace, knowing that God knows it's going to happen and he's going to be with us. Um, He hasn't abandoned us. Uh, He hasn't lost the war. Oh, no, he's winning the war. Uh, He has the whole thing played out. He knows what's going to happen, and he let us know ahead of time what's going to happen so that in him we have peace. We don't have despair. Sometimes I see Christians, we get real discouraged, right? We say, oh, this is terrible. These are all, it's awful. Yeah, it is terrible. But it should not get us down because God let us know ahead of time that things will will happen as as we see them playing out. Uh, It will be as such as as the days of, of Noah, if you will. So, We should not be surprised. We should not be downhearted. Um, That's not scriptural. But we need to be aware and alert of what's taking place around us. And we need to remember that no matter what the tribulation, God has given us victory because Jesus has overcome the world through his death on the cross and his resurrection and his promise for eternal life and his eternal kingdom that will come uh, as he is appointed and anointed it to come. So don't be discouraged, be encouraged. No matter what we face, no matter how great the challenges, remember, always, always keep the faith. Over the last 20 years, with all your support, we've been able to not only launch the original My Pillow, but also the My Pillow mattress topper, Giza Dream bed sheets, My Slippers, and the My Pillow bath towels. But there's so much more. In fact, we have over 200 products, and I'm so confident that you'll love each and every one of them that when you go to mypillow.com now, you'll immediately receive a free gift valued at $20 just for checking out the website. No purchase necessary. Get everything from My my pillow blankets, sleepwear, kitchen towels, mattresses, duvets, pet beds, body pillows, comforters, couch pillows, bathrobes, and so much more. So go to mypillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get deep discounts on all my pillow products. And remember, just for checking out mypillow.com, you'll immediately receive a free gift valued at $20. No purchase necessary. This is a limited time promotion, so go to mypillow.com now.